So hi everybody, uh, thank you for coming today. I really appreciate you all being here. Um, so today we're going to be talking about no code, no problem, tales of getting involved with the OpenStack community without actually knowing any code. So before I even jump into anything, uh, I just want to start with this puzzle piece. So it's a red puzzle piece and this is a key part of this talk. But we're going to come back to this later and it's all going to tie everything together. So my name is Sonia Ramza and I work with the OpenStack Foundation in the Community Management Division. I work with overseeing overseeing user groups, looking at the ambassador program, and just helping generally get feedback on user groups so we can make it a better experience for all. So what we're going to cover today, so we're going to look at how the community is structured, and then we're going to see where you can get involved within that structure. We're going to hear from our success story, Lisa Marie Namphy, and then we're going to have a bit of a Q&A time. So firstly, let's just have a quick look at the community structure. So firstly, at the top, we have the OpenStack Foundation. So they advocate for the global development distribution of the OpenStack cloud computing operating system. And then within that, they have corporate governance by its members, board of directors, and committees. So the OpenStack members breaks down into the individual, platinum, and gold members. The platinum and gold members are companies that have significant resources that contribute to OpenStack. We're going to come back to the individual members later. In terms of our committees, we have the Technical, User and Legal Affairs Committee. The Technical Committee oversees all OpenStack projects and helps decide on any decisions that need to be made, whether a new project needs to be incubated or whether there's a decision or an issue that needs to be resolved. The User Committee looks at all feedback from the users. They also look at deployment statistics and try to take that feedback and make the experience better for the technical users. And finally, the Legal Affairs Committee advises on all legal processes and also intellectual property strategy. So now within this structure, let's look at where you can join. So basically, it's all within the individual member structure, but there are many different ways within this that you can participate or someone you know who might want to get involved but doesn't know any code but would love to join and get started. So firstly, user groups. We have user groups all over the world. So these, all the pins there is where we have all our different user groups. And even in Australia, there's one in every single state, even though we don't have a pin for every single one. This is where users come together and discuss and talk about the technology. But even if you're not a particular user of the technology, there are great talks that have been organised by user group organisers at the meetups, so where people come together to discuss. It's also a great way to network and meet people from different organisations involved with the technology. So you may also want to contribute content. There are many different ways you can contribute content without it actually being code. So firstly, UX, which also means user experience. So there might be in regards to the interface. How is the user experiencing the OpenStack interface? Whether they might want to have feedback for a particular thing that doesn't make any sense, or whether there's something that's broken that think might be done better. You could do your own user experience survey and say, OK, I don't like these certain things. You could uh, find some other users who have never used it before, but get them to go through it and take their feedback on what the experience is like. Or you could even just talk to the user committee and see what they, they what, provide some feedback to them about what uh, you think about it. So writing, writing, there's a couple of different areas within writing for OpenStack that you could be involved in. So firstly, there's the blog. The blog is open for contributors. You can write about any topic you like, whether this is your first summit and maybe you want to write about your experiences here at the summit, that might interest you. And also, if you just want to have some particular element featured but may not want to write the article, you can also submit ideas to the OpenStack blog and they will take that on and hopefully be able to implement that. The OpenStack websites. Anything within the OpenStack website is open for your opinion. If you find something that's broken, whether a link doesn't lead to where it should, or that leads to an error page, or if you find there's some particular content that could do, have some reworking that you think could be better, this is certainly your, your chance to shine. We, we're open for contr contributions, or if you think there's some particular content that you wish was on the, the website that would be useful, please do come forth and contribute. 
So how many, do any people here speak another language other than English? Yep, we've got a couple, yep. So you could definitely contribute to translating, documentation, anything on the user experience of OpenStack. We're always looking for people to help contribute back to that so we can make it localised and get many more users within different regions participating and using OpenStack. So finally, the ambassador program. So our ambassadors are people who have become user group leaders and organisers, have facilitated one particular user group, and then have become leaders within their region in order to continue the process and help other groups through that, like even new groups who have come through, help mentor them through the process of becoming an even thriving user group. So if you want to get involved with that, the best way is to start at the user group and then work your way up. So get involved, start helping out, see where you can contribute, and then eventually you might become a user group leader where you facilitate, you can organise sponsors, you make sure you, you can get a venue happen for where your participants can come and meet. And when you're really getting that well, that's when you start stepping up to things like the ambassador program. But the sky's the limit, we're all here to contribute and participate, so this is something you could all potentially do. So now that leads me to our success story, which is Lisa Marie Namphy. She is an ambassador for OpenStack in the US region. Correct. And she's also done some many other different projects advocating for OpenStack within the US as well. So I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Sonia. So first of all, I want to really thank Sonia for jumping on board so quickly. And this is your first summit, right? Yeah. Yep. And she's uh, <laughs> down in Australia, and she's helping facilitate this entire global program from Australia. And she's doing a fantastic job. That's why I took a little picture of her for her scrapbook, <laughs> uh, in you. case you're wondering about that. Um, but anyway, so thank you so much. She works with Tom Fifield, who many of you know and love. Um, and we're so happy to have her on board. So big success story there. Um, <laughs> you can get involved no matter where you live in the world, and even if it's a global role. Uh, so I was asked to be the U.S. ambassador at the beginning of the year, having run the San Francisco Bay Area OpenStack user group for um, over three years. Uh, San Francisco Bay Area is a large region and a large tech region, and we were also the first OpenStack group. So we have meetup.com slash OpenStack. If you ever want to join us or join one of our meetups, we run two meetups a month, usually sometimes three. It's just a very active region. We have a lot of members in our user group who aren't based in the region as well. Um, so one thing I like to do with the user group is send out newsletters. It's a distribution of over 6,000 people because um, it's, a, it's the largest <laughs> user group. Um, and you know, I just make sure the content is super relevant and um, Regionally, I lobby for discount codes for the conferences that come through town, so our user groups get um, sometimes very significant discounts. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to lobby for your user group. So the foundation was nice enough to recognize that and, um, and, and asked me to be the U.S. ambassador for the whole U.S. Uh, and as you saw from Sonia's map with all the blue dots, we have a lot of user groups in the U.S. So it's, it was a little daunting at first. I, I am looking for help. If any of you uh, got two people in mind who would be phenomenal ambassadors, um, who I can see right here. Um, but uh, it'd be great to break up the region and, and get more help. Um, and as Sonia said, if you've already started to run a user group, it's a really easy, smooth transition into becoming an ambassador. I think the first two things that I did as ambassador was um, to make the San Diego user group and then the Pasadena LA user group, official, give them official user group status. These were, these were uh, guys, I don't know if you know John Sidaris or Gary Kavorkian, doing phenomenal things in their region. I mean, what John has done with the user group in San Diego is amazing. He, he has a hackathon and or a, a hands-on training class before every um, meetup that he does. He's gone out and lobbied for funding. He's got servers donated. He runs, he borrows cloud uh, compute from the UC San Diego, I think. He was very... Uh, very active in the OpenStack days that we had on the West Coast. So there's people out there who are doing amazing things and need to be recognized, and they're already doing it. No one comes necessarily to me and says, okay, I want to now start to give you 90% of my time and to do all these great things. But there are people who are doing that, and they're just doing it because, um, you know, they have a passion for it. And to find those people and to, to give them some acknowledgement and to give them official status and things like that is really important. So that's one of the things that I like to do as ambassador. Um, we also, we don't like to reinvent the wheel all the time. So um, we're, we're lucky in San Francisco Bay Area. We've got a lot of great speakers who want to speak, and there's a lot of great content. So we like to share that with other regions. Every time I run a meetup, we um, video 
and we record the whole thing, and we put the slides and the video up on the Meetup calendar. So they're there archived for pretty much every Meetup I've ever run. So other regions have access to that content, and those speakers are often willing to travel to other regions too. So when I get asked to help with content, um, my first answer is, is you know, find a presentation you liked and go and go and um, find that speaker and ask them. Um, and if they can't travel, then maybe you, you can do a remote a hangout or something like that, or, or we can find somebody else who's, who's more locally um, in your, in your geo. Um, but content seems to be something that people struggle with regionally. So we're trying to figure out a way to consolidate content. The foundation has a speakers bureau. We have a list of people who are willing to travel to help out in the different regions. So don't be daunted if, you, if you're remote. You can still get involved and you can still really help. Um, another thing uh, that we did, well, one of the things I did um, when I was still working at HP, but it wasn't really part of my HP job, is I wrote a book on OpenStack. Twice, actually, two books on OpenStack. Um, and I'm not a technical person, so you know, I'm technical enough, but the, the thing about community is it's a community. And there's always people who are willing to help you. Um, Paul Holland is credited in my book. He was very helpful um, with some of the, from the open source program office, uh, some of the foundation metrics and you know, helping with the, the legal side of things. And, um, and then I, I had a bunch of PTLs that I sat down with and you know, Monty Taylor and um, some of the, the, big, the big names in OpenStack and they were very willing to help. So you can do a lot of things by just asking for help. And this community is fantastic and everybody wants to help. Another thing that I found really helpful uh, to, to further the advancement of OpenStack is make sure you tie in the other technologies that you've been hearing so much about for the last couple of days at this summit in all the keynotes and in all the sessions. Um, one of the things I did with our user group is I combined, I, I essentially made it the OpenStack and containers user group. And um, that has been extremely successful. And since last summer, I've run 13 meetups on Kubernetes, um, which has now been recognized by the CNCF. And I spoke yesterday during the Kubernetes day and we did a, um, a session in the, in the big grand ballroom on OpenStack and containers. Uh, did anyone see that, by the way? Did anyone get there? The Kubernetes track was really good, and it was packed. I mean, it, was, it just shows the interest in this other technology. I'm sure the, the NFV track and mm -hmm. um, some of the other tracks that are, um, that are here are, have also been as popular. So tying in this other technologies, IoT, AI, machine learning, you know, whatever it is um, that you can combine has is, is been really popular with, with the user groups. The, the, the folks have loved it. And then the, the last thing I'll say is this year we, we consciously decided in the US, but particularly in my region, to focus on the user, you know, just to showcase those, those user stories. And the first meetup that I ran this year was at GoDaddy. And GoDaddy talked about what they built with Docker on OpenStack. Um, Josh Harlow presented it, and he's the PTL of Oslo, but he works at GoDaddy. Um, it was packed. We had almost 200 people, I think 175 people in the room. The video's up there on the site if you want to see what he did. And, it's really cool what they what they built, and Josh is really cool too. He's like, well, I'll try to, I'll try not to make this so complicated. I'll try to simplify it. And I said, no, Josh, I, tell them what you built and tell them how you built it. Don't say it was easy because then they'll try it and, and they'll say this isn't easy and they'll give up. You know, show them what you did and 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 how you were successful. Um, so he did and he presented it and he had you know almost an, as many questions at the end as he had presentation material, and then a line almost out the door to still talk to him afterwards. So uh, people are starved for this content and they want to hear these stories. So help tell these stories. You don't have to be the one to tell it, but they're in your region. So figure out a way to showcase these stories, and people really appreciate that. Um, was there anything else specifically you wanted me to cover? I just actually got a question for oh, you. Okay. Yeah. Um, what if, like your first recommendation, so people here haven't got started, what would be the first thing they should step out and do, in your opinion? To be an ambassador, to run a user group, or just, just anything? Just, just to get started. Go to a meetup. I mean, it, become a member of your community. And before you can ever run or lead communities, you have to participate in communities. You cannot phone this one in. So if you have a passion for this and if you're interested in it, find a local meetup and go. And if there isn't a local meetup, find one that will do online or join ours. We really try to live stream every time, but um, if we can't do that, we always have a recording. Um, I, if I don't do a hangout or I don't you know, have a live stream, I'm getting pinged the entire time. My, my phone and my meetup um, feed is going crazy saying, you know, 
know, can you please turn on a live feed? So people are, are really starved to participate in this community, uh, no matter where they are. But I think probably most, is there anyone here that is from a geography that's so remote that you don't have a meetup near you? Yeah, so if you want to get involved, you want to get started, just go to the local meetup and meet the, the local organizer, and then ask if you can help. And I guarantee you the answer will be, <laughs> oh, yes, please, yes. Um, and then you guys can have a lot of fun. Okay. Any more to add? Oh, no, I didn't know if you had any other oh, yeah, questions. No, no, that, was, that was my only question. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Do they have any questions? Any questions at this stage? Is there anyone here who's dying to start a user group? I asked that question yesterday and I got zero hands also. <laughs> it's a lot of work, um, but it's a lot of fun. It's really rewarding. And in the last couple of years, we've had so much more support from the foundation. You know, in the early years, there was a, there was kind of a, a conscious attempt to keep the user communities and even things like women of OpenStack mm -hmm. separate from the foundation and make sure that they were community run and community led. And, um, and, and that, that worked, that worked well. But I think, um, and I think one of the goals of the ambassador program was to make sure that we do have that direct uh, contact with the foundation and that we're getting the help. And you, know, you kind of need one vision that everyone has to be on the same page with and make sure we're all tracking to that. And they're open to so much feedback. They're really listening. So this year I called up Jonathan Bryce in January and I said, here's how I think I'm going to architect this community this year. This is my job as community architect uh, and this is what my thought is. What do you think? And he was like, sounds great. Um, and I'm like, great, spread the word because I think we should all be on the same page. And they were really open to that. Uh, so it, it's, it's much more rewarding. You know, it, was, it was a lot of work to start, but the ball has already, is already rolling. Um, and now it's just up to us to push it further and push it into the edge technologies. So you've hit the snowball phase and it's just going to keep growing? I hope, yeah. I hope so. It's, you know, it's, it's different. You know, people, we hear a lot about OpenStack, um, you know, in the, all over the news, especially like, oh, this is the end of OpenStack, and this is the end of OpenStack, and this will be the end of OpenStack. <laughs> and, you know, I think we've heard that every year for seven years now. Um, and yet, we're about to throw OpenStack a seventh birthday party. So, um, I just think, but it looks different than it looked a few years ago, and it's going to look different, you know, a few years from now. And, uh, you know, the St. Your Father's OpenStack, or whatever, that, however that commercial went. Um, and so, you know, roll with it. So, I don't know that it's necessarily growing, but it's changing. I mean, if we can take credit or if we can count all of those other technologies, that slide that Lauren had that had, you know, all of the other initiatives that we're collaborating with now, then yes, it's massive. Um, uh, the OpenStack and Kubernetes community now is very tight in the San Francisco Bay Area, so yay, we just doubled. So there's a lot of, um, I think, opportunity there, and you can call it growth or you can just say this is uh, the future of OpenStack. All right, thank That's you. my take on it. Yeah. Oh, just back on that point that Lisa made, if you're thinking of actually starting a user group but didn't want to put your hand up, but if you are actually ever thinking of doing that, the best place to come to is an ambassador, the best person, because the ambassador will help guide you through that process and they'll be there to support you. You think like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but they, they will be there to guide you and help you and you'll, get, you'll, you'll achieve the goals you want to achieve with the user group through fantastic people like Lisa. She's too kind. So. <laughs> Right now, I'm the, for the U.S. Um, we, I hope that Sheila, I think, I know she wants to, so I hope we'll yeah. have Sheila on board. You, you guys know Sheila from Comcast. She's been on main stage at the Summit C4, and um, she's part of the UC. Uh, so she's so qualified, oh my gosh, and I'm so happy to have her helping. So she will take over the, the East Coast. Uh, I think she's based in the Virginia area, mm -hmm. um, kind of around the D.C. region, and she's been running that North Virginia meetup for a while. So for the U.S., contact either me or Sheila, and um, there's a website. Open, it's on OpenStack.org on the community page? Yeah, or we're, the we're password has the, its own link? Yeah, resources. Oh, you're going to yeah, Okay, yeah. cool. Good. Then please continue. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. So where do we go from here? So we looked at the community structure. We looked at, you know, heard from a success story. And we've got, you know, the gliding reviews of that we can definitely get involved. And it is possible. So first thing is to stay up to date. The best way to keep to get started is to know what's going on, join the mailing list, follow OpenStack on social media. You might hear about a particular event that's happening you might want to attend in your local region, such as the OpenStack Days. It's sort of like a mini version of the summit, but within your region, such as we've got one coming up in Australia, the OpenStack Day in Melbourne on the 1st of June. So th things like that you can get involved with, and also insightful articles. You know, SuperUser has some great articles from people who are user group leaders on um, particular parts of the technology. There are great things to get involved with and understand. 
So the first one I'd recommend is to join the community mailing list. That is where a lot of community discussion happens. Also, the user group newsletter goes out on that uh, particular feed. So then you'd also hear about events that are going on, again, links to the, the super user articles that are relevant. And also to follow OpenStack on Twitter and Facebook. So again, another great news feed for information. So if the next one is check out the user group portal. So this is where you'll find all your information regarding whether it's to start the new user group. If we're all like, feel free to start. I'd love to hear from you if you want to do that. Uh, and also finding your local user group. So there's a gigantic list of all the different ones we have in, uh, around the world. And also just tip pages, information to get started, people you can contact. And also this uh, portal has the link to the ambassadors page where you can find who your local ambassador is also. So if you were interested in contributing content, whether it was the user experience, whether it was the blog, the website, or the translation, uh, please do head to this link. Or whether you can, on Google, just search for uh, how to contribute OpenStack, and then you'll find all the different information about each of those specific areas. And a lot of them also encourage you to join their mailing lists, and they have the right people to contact for you to whether you want to contribute the, to the blog or to the user experience. So if you're still unsure, or you have a different idea, or there's you know, maybe this, like you thought about heard the women of OpenStack idea, and you thought maybe there's something you could do for diversity in your area, Please head down to the Foundation Lounge and let's chat. You know, I'll be there uh, today after the talk from 10 to 11 and also on Thursday from 11.50 to 12.30. So I'd really love to talk if you've got some sort of idea or you've still got more questions or whether it's something you want to get started. Really would love to have a chat. So now we're back to the red puzzle piece. This is where we started. So if you came in late, I just showed this uh, picture of a red puzzle piece and then just kept going with the talk. Uh, so the point of showing this red puzzle piece was that we went through the community structure of how the OpenStack community looks like. And then we went through and I said, OK, you could contribute here and here and here. And so the point is, you are the piece in the puzzle. So together, all of you, the, the non-technical side, the technical side, and everything in between, together makes one picture, one big picture of the OpenStack community. And you can be one of those pieces, because the OpenStack community is open source, and it's also open for all to contribute, no matter what your background is. So that's the main part of the talk. Um, we've got time left over for some Q&A. Uh, any questions at all? <laughs> yep. Uh, this is obviously a volunteer effort that you both are doing, and I'm sure we're looking for volunteers. Yep. Can you talk about why you volunteer your time? What's the benefit and what drives you to do this? Because that's what you should be asking everybody. Joseph is asking why we volunteer our time. I'll just repeat it for the video uh, recording. Um, and yes, it is a volunteer. Um, unless, you know, you guys, we're going to start putting tip jars out at our meetups, I think, because <laughs> we definitely want to upgrade the quality of pizza and beer. Um, but it's, uh, I, I think the why is we just have a passion for it. We're all in open source, and we wouldn't be in open source if we didn't believe in FOSS, like just through and throughout all of our beings. Um, and we spend time at, at these conferences and also at scale. And I was at the Community Leadership Summit this last weekend in Austin. Um, and you know, there's amazing people who, who build these communities. And I, as far as I can tell, I've never known anyone that's really got paid to do it. Um, so I think we just have a passion for open source is, is thing number one, and, um, and a passion for community. And for me, I joined SF Bay. Um, it, the technology is also first, second, and third what draws me to it. Uh, and OpenStack was the most exciting technology that I'd seen come around in a long time, you know, maybe six years ago when I first started getting involved. Um, and there's just a, there was a buzz around it, and there's a buzz around the San Francisco Bay. And at the time, I was in the HP office at, in Sunnyvale which is literally across the runway from NASA where OpenStack started. Um, and you know, I just wanted to get involved in this. And so I got involved in the community 
And then I was like, this needs to be organized a little bit better. Um, and I think I could help. And then, of course, once you volunteer, you kind of get sucked in. Um, and, uh, and so like Hotel California syndrome, right? Um, but it was fun, and we made it fun, and it's a fantastic community, and some of my best friends on the planet are the people that I met through this community. So it's been really rewarding, and I've met people from all over the world. Um, so I would say that's why I got into it. Sonia might have a different answer, but she's also about half my age and <laughs> has a bright future ahead of her. Um, so why don't you say why you got into it? Uh, well, part of it was it was just a great opportunity and the passion for the technology and the fact that it is open source, that there is that opportunity to be able to be involved. Um, because there are a lot of things where there are high barriers to being involved with a particular technology or community. And, and the fact that that is such an easy thing, it's accessibility is just such a huge um, value for me. So that, that was a really big part of it. And, just, and the passion for the technology as well. It's really cool technology. You should get into it, Joseph. <laughs> I almost think that was a rhetorical question because you've been involved in this community for a very long time. So I could ask you why, why you're here. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's a community. You're part of it. This is very dangerous because I wasn't on the agenda and you have no idea what I'm going to say. So buckle up. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll, I'll say the same thing. Very passionate about uh, what OpenStack. I've been fortunate to be part of it since uh, 2010, since the very beginning and I've been able to serve on the board. Um, and in addition to all the passion about the technology, I think there's, there's two very tangible, very tactical, tactical things. One, there's a lot of problems that exist in the, on the planet uh, that are social and technological that I think OpenStack and open source communities can actually help address. We heard some of it in the keynote yesterday. Uh, things like um, you know, how you can identify disease before anybody realizes there are symptoms happening. Guess what? Technology like OpenStack helps you do that. Um, is there life anywhere else in the universe? Guess what? Technologies like OpenStack can help you do that. So participating in something that actually can help us progress as a human race, number one to me, it's, that's the number one thing that says, is there anything that uh, I can do? And I used to be an engineer many years ago. I'm definitely more on the executive and business side now. But I will say, I'll reiterate what was said today. Don't view OpenStack or any open source community as purely a technology only people thing. It's not. It has to be people that understand marketing. It has to be people that understand sales. It has to be people that understand um, you know, partnerships and alliances. That is all critical. Um, you know, it's, like a, it's like a body. Um, if you've got one body part, you can't function as a human being, right? You need all these different parts. So I will reiterate, I don't feel like our community says that enough. I know we say it in some places, but we don't say it enough. Every function that is represented in this room is needed in the community. And so for us to be able to do these challenging things, I would say that your skill set, your experience, your background is needed. So um, there's, there's definitely a benefit there. And my second one would be there is benefit for you as well, very professionally, right, speaking, right? There is a host of companies, a host of other communities, a host of other projects that getting involved even as a volunteer and serving as a meetup coordinator, as a, a marketing representative, as, as, a, as part of the user community, as, a part, as part of the working, working group, product group, there are tons of volunteer opportunities where you get exposure. It helps your career significantly. So. One very nice and uh, <laughs> one very you know uh, nice and uh, and sweet reason why you know obviously we can advance everything, but in a very tactical way it's good for you it's good for your career it broadens your horizons you see others' perspectives, and in your career there's a definitely opportunity for advancement as well so I'll put those two very tactical things out of there. Thank you, Joseph. And he's absolutely right. the The reason I wrote the book that I wrote is because I got you know. 100 questions on just like, what is OpenStack? Why are you so passionate about it? Why should companies care? Why should companies invest so much? And there was a lot of in the weeds technical stuff written about OpenStack and a lot of docs up on OpenStack.org and um, lots of other places, but nobody had written that book. 
you know, kind of cloud for dummies kind of thing. And so I was uh, approached to do it. And, um, and, you know, I said, well, I answer that question all the time in the meetups. And I answer that question all the time when I'm talking to people. So I guess I'll answer that question in a little booklet. And it was extremely popular. Like 13,000 copies of it were downloaded when, when the first edition came out because people were starved for this. And we translated it into three Asian languages. And when I went to the summit in Tokyo in Japan, I had the team from NEC running up to me. And they were like, thank you for translating your book into Japanese. You know, I had made my whole team read the book. And I was like, wow. But people just really wanted to know that kind of bigger picture, higher level. You know, why was the foundation created? Why, um, you know, why, why all of this? Why, how come we all get together in Boston on a Tuesday and Wednesday and talk about infrastructure? You know, talk about the open infrastructure. I mean, this is a movement and people wanted to get involved and they, and they wanted to understand it. So there's lots of ways to contribute and you, your skills skills are, are very much needed and very appreciated. Anyone else want to talk about why they're here? I'm, I'm impressed that you came to this talk, so clearly you have a passion for it too, and if you want to share your story, you're welcome to. I say as I take over Sonia's presentation, it's, it's right. no, no, she's it's like, great. that's the last time we invite her. <laughs> I just wanted to build on what you both said about, you know, meeting people, even just coming to these events like OpenStack Days and even the user groups. Like those people, that's that's not, you know, the user group isn't a day job. They've got somewhere else that they're also, you know, contributing to. So even just being here, I've met someone from the Linux Foundation. I met someone from at and I met someone from Verizon. I met some, like you just meet people from everywhere and every place. And it's just such a great way to, to network even and just to get your face out there, which is, you know, like pivotal to get sourcing that next opportunity or sourcing that next big thing that will propel you to the next big thing after that. So highly recommend it. So was there any other questions? Cool. We can go okay. get coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Skipped all that this morning. So thank you, Cecilia, all for you for coming, and I uh, hope you can all get involved and, and start your make your mark on the OpenStack community. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.